Hi guys, and welcome to this episode of Design Your Life with Katya Abdiv. Today's show is all about cool stuff you can do for your home. We'll make some beautiful wall art and a few uh, super comfortable and cozy and modern pillows for your bedroom or your living room. Stay tuned. Hi guys, and welcome to today's episode of Design Your Life with Katya Abdiv. Today we're gonna be designing for the house. What do you have on your walls? Or what are you buying when you decide to decorate the walls? Most likely uh, painting on a canvas, right? Well, today we're gonna learn how to make something cool and unique, which is what I like to decorate my house with. I like things that are different, uh, like a cassette tape or leather, something unique, something people have not seen before. So I'm gonna show you one of those pieces when we come back. Welcome back guys and we're gonna start with this piece right here. The idea I got was actually from my three-year-old son and more specifically his crayons laying everywhere all over the house and I started thinking that I remember when I was a kid we were making all of those melted wax crayon uh, stuff I'm like hmm why don't I try to take this to the next level and incorporate my fashion ideas into something like this and make a unique piece of art that nobody else will have, right? So the idea for this one was, well, you can see she's dropping the crayons that gradually become her style and her dress. And the same happens here, like part of those crayons are melted and becomes part of the other side of the dress. So that was my idea behind it. And it's very easy to make. And it, you don't have to use that exact shape, that exact figure, but use this idea of melted crayons into becoming part of the dress or part of whatever the subject of the picture is and make it your own. So let's get started. What do we need? Of course, we need crayons. And how many crayons do we need? Well, it depends on the picture, of course. And if you wanna stay in the same color scheme or if you wanna use a whole rainbow, it's up to you. It's your design, it's your idea. For this particular one, I there was something about between 40 and 50 crayons and I wanted to stay like from orange to red to purple-ish to a little bit of blue color scheme. So I needed two boxes of crayons that give me enough of each one to have this image. But it's totally up to you. There is 120 in the biggest box I think that I found um, of crayons and I only need 40. So technically you can be okay with one box and then have some leftovers. So what do you do next? We get boxes of crayons you separate them because they come in, the colors are all mixed together, like so. So if you wanna stick in the same color palette, you take them all out and start separating. So pinks go together. And the way I figured was the easiest for me was to get all the reds together, purples, then blues, and then it doesn't have to be exact at this, and I know I don't want any green or brown. It doesn't have to be exact at this point, but at least close enough, and then once you have most of them laid out, you can figure out what shade goes exactly behind which crayon. Okay. 
oh, we don't we don't need green so purple goes here and then we have the blues so we don't need that one okay well you get the idea so however many crayons guys you have you need to separate it and make sure you have enough to cover the surface that you want to cover which in my case is the surface of the dress this can take some time and if you have a child in like my three-year-old loved the process but he kept messing up colors a little bit <laughs> so but at least it was fun for him so if you want to engage your kids this will be a good project for them to do and also a good idea would be to incorporate colors that you guys have in whatever space you want to put it on let's say you want to decorate your bedroom so look at the bedroom colors or maybe you want a splash of color that's completely opposite it's up to you that's part of the creative process and okay so we need some surface to work on and i like to work on some of the old canvases because i don't know if you can see but this one is a little rough so i can't really use it for the art project so we're not going to waste it of course so this is something to protect your work surface it works great we definitely need glue and you can see here i have a few different kinds which i personally liked both the 527 and the squid grip it works with any surfaces it dries fast and clear but my absolute best is the hot glue i think nothing beats the hot glue in those projects it, and the best part is it dries so fast you don't have to wait but of course it's hot so be careful watch out make sure no kids are around because they can burn themselves very very easily and we would also need a pair of scissors and a canvas and that's i think that's pretty much it Good. so it's a very cool and a very budget friendly project okay crayons are done now we need the canvas that actually gets that we're going to be working on if you think you're not going to be able to draw a face or you're not sure what and how to do it there are plenty of images online just go google it and kind of maybe trace or get a, your favorite picture and trace the silhouette just uh, it doesn't have to be precise or exact or it's part of the fashion fun and which is what i like about those projects that there is no right or wrong it's just kind of and i'm trying to make something similar to my previous one okay so the dress is gonna go this way we're gonna fix her face a little bit later on well lashes of course everybody needs lashes every end and eyebrow okay, and okay so the outline of my sketch looks something like this that's just the outline, right? All the magic is gonna happen with the colors. Okay, then, did you guys notice how this card has a 3D effect? So we're gonna make that part next. And that part is gonna go somewhere around here. Again, it doesn't have to be precise or exact, we can just eyeball it. So, see, I don't have any template, just a piece of white paper and scissors. And we're gonna cut something like this big and this wide, a triangle that would eventually make uh, the fold of the dress. It's too long, longer than the canvas itself. So maybe we can go something like that. And we're gonna fold it this way, and that's what would create the curve. I think the top needs to be a little smaller as well. Hot glue, watch your fingers. If you guys have been working with hot glue, you know that it's very easy to burn yourself. It happened to me many, many times. See, the skirt of the part of the bottom of the skirt is a little too long, so we're just gonna cut it. Then we're gonna fold it into something like this. So the line will go here. And it's okay if a little bit of glue got on the outside, that's perfectly fine because all this will be covered with melted crayons. You won't see any of it, don't worry. So at this point, it should look something like this. So you have a sketch, you have your lady silhouette, and then you have. Um, the paper, the, th the 3D thing, the cool factor. Next is putting crayons on the dress. Also, something I want to point out, that this side of the skirt where the top of the crayons are is obviously smaller than this one. So you cannot lay them perpendic um, 
parallel to each other. They have to be, they have to be a little bit of distance in here, which trust me, when it's a very teeny tiny bit, nobody would even notice, but for them to lay out more prettier, <laughs> just keep that in mind when you lay them out. And the good base is to do about two or three Crayolas at a time. So something like that. And if you guys notice the bottom edge, it's not completely straight. We have a curve, just like a dress would in normal life. And we have a few more. Make sure you cover that seam right here where paper is connected to the canvas. You don't want it to be seen. Make sure this is completely covered. And it dries super, super fast, so it's already dry. So at this point, it should look something like this. Okay. I forgot to mention one more tool that you guys would need, and you most likely have it in your house. It's just a regular hair dryer. Any hair dryer would do. Its purpose is to melt the wax, the crayon, wax in the crayons, so we get the picture and the mix that we need. And I'm using a glove just because from the experience it gets pretty hot when you have to hold it. Um, so that works for me. And also a good advice is to keep some sort of wipes nearby just in case it starts running in the wrong direction you can always wipe it off. it should look something like this and each each one of you will have something unique and something that nobody else will have and it's gonna be part of the overall creative fun that you're having okay so now we're gonna fill in her body right so we need the exact same colors plus a few shades for the skin but it can be that doesn't even have to be the exact shade and uh, keep in mind this is kind of like a building up process so you do a little bit you step back you see you look hmm that looks enough or maybe no it doesn't look enough and we're gonna add a few melted colors on top so you're just gonna build it up until you like the result that you see so my idea is that it looks kind of like a sketch so it doesn't have to be precise it does, we're not looking for exact face facial features or anything like that just like it's a fashion silhouette type of drawing all right so here we are that's what we have at this point right she's dropping crayons the green ones then they become part of the dress, then they become the yellow part of the dress, and then the orange, and then now we need to work on this part. Basically the continuation of the color scheme that you guys were gonna use, which in my case is orange. And you would need a few shades, roughly about, um, well, I think I have about 17 to 20 pieces, crayons right here, which should be enough. And um, color-wise, my personal preference is when most of the dress is like two colors, like in this case, green and yellow, and then you have a teeny tiny bit of orange on the edge, and then this orange is tied to the negative space right here. As opposed to, for example, if we didn't have the orange and we would end with the yellow, there will be a lot of yellow here and a lot of yellow here. That's usually less appealing than having like a teeny tiny glimpse of color on her dress that would, would be visually tied to the color right here. And this is just uh, whatever leftover orange colors we have, that are, they don't have a particular shade or anything like this. And what I would do is pick them up in groups of two or three, well, or four actually in this case, and we just glue them on the canvas. And this part, I thought it would be a good idea to, to glue them perpendicular to each other, so sort of have this geometric feel which is in contrast to the skirt, which is circular and curvy and very different. So contrast is usually a good thing in art. Okay, let's go. So 
when you direct the hair dryer specifically pointing at this, that's the splashes that would happen. You can go with the splashes, you can go with the like, uh, drop and like, fall like we did here. You can go creative with it, have fun with it. And also one little detail that you guys see we did in the previous one was we added a little hat piece, a little hat for her, which we can also do here. And this is very simple. So, hot glue, don't burn your fingers. And a few feathers. Well, actually, no, I don't like it this way. I like it this way. But. Okay, and you can also add a little bead or a little rhinestone if you want to. But I'm gonna leave it at that. Well, actually, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of a grand crayon to it. Why not? Our crayon will be a bead in this case. <laughs> I'll do it like this. And your painting is done and ready for your house. Now don't go away. Next, on this double feature of Design Your Life with Katya at Vive, Katya will show you how to design beautiful pillows for your home decor. Hi guys, today we'll be designing something cool for your home. Today we're gonna make a unique and non-traditional pillow for your home. This is a little version of it. And this is a big version, which is also can be broken down into two pillows. So how cool would it be to keep playing? And I know my toddler would like playing with it, putting it into one and then removing it. They're super cuddly, super soft. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start with this one. Looks like a ball, so it's the same shape all around. So to make this, we need fabric, we need scissors, and we need a marking tool and a sewing machine. Or you can also glue it with an iron, but I would do a sewing machine. Fabric, when you pick your fabric, the good option is something that is soft, because it's a pillow, you want it to be comfortable, and also something that has at least a little bit of stretch to it. Because there are so many turns in the pillow, as you can see, and if the fabric is not stretchable, like if you make it from a jean fabric, for example, there will be a lot of folds in the inside in every turn. It's not gonna look pretty. And this is a velvet, which would also look great for this. It's velvet with a gold uh, print in it. Also has a stretch. So when you pick fabric, pick something like this. And the length of the fabric that you need is gonna depend on the size of the pillow. Well, this one, for example, is five yard long. So you start by cutting. Let me start with this fabric first. You can also use an old blanket that you have and you want to recycle. If you want to, if you if you want to, you can combine. Let's say buy two and a half yard and then cut two of them and sew in the middle. It's totally fine. And we'll mark the six inches. Four, five, six. Well, this one is a slightly thicker one than the other one. So for this one, it needs to be six inch wide. Cut a lot. And then just cut. And let me show you a little trick of cutting it evenly. The easier way. Something that would make it, won't take that long. So you start, you measure a little bit, six inch, right? Right here. Then you just fold it like that. You just fold it against this edge instead of measuring again, which would take more time, right? Now you have a bigger piece. Now you fold all of it. So always go, go and go for a longer length that you think you would need. Fold it in half, go to your sewing machine and sew. Just simple straight stitch. So it would look something like that. You can also glue it or use a special fabric glue. It's called liquid liquid thread. It's also durable, but sewing, I think sewing is easier and faster. Then once this is done, we need to turn it upside down. So you get a long tube. This might take you a few minutes. 
but just just keep going until the whole roll join in. Okay, now we need to make it a fluffy and soft. We need to stop it. The easier way to do it, just stop a little bit. Then we took a stick and just push it through. Push it through the center, right? And then you do from the other end. And this part will take you the longest. After this, it's everything's gonna go fast. And if you have bumps, because I was trying to do it quickly, if you have bumps like this, just try it with your fingers, try to squish it with your fingers. Now the fun part begins. Starting with this little one. And remember, if you get lost at any point, direct directions and pictures of this project are gonna be on the website. Okay, so this, you start. This is your one tail, right? The long tail is on the floor. Start like this, you make a loop. Look something like that. Okay, so it should look something like a pretzel. Then the longer tail goes below the shorter tail and you bring the whole remaining piece with you. Okay. Then the longer end goes through the first hole, up, this way and through here and as you go try to make it tighter I keep pulling keep pulling it making it tighter okay. so it should look something like this and then the, the remaining part, you just follow the path of what we just, like, you just follow the path of the first part of it. So you see how this one goes, you, you keep following. And it might seem hard now, but I promise you, as you start making, it's gonna make sense. And now each of those twists are doubled. So we get two ends. Well, this one is not, I purposefully not stop the end of it because you're gonna lose it anyways while you are twisting. So just finish stopping. This one is a little longer than I needed. So we would need to cut this two in. Well, you can just twist it actually. One to this one. And you, the first steps are the same steps we did before. You got a strip of fabric, which in this case it's six yard by five inches, so it's one inch shorter, and yeah, and, and one yard longer. So five yards, no, six yards by five inches. There you go. Okay, so let's let me show you how this one folds. You take your tube, make a loop, right? Put it here. Then you reach with your hand and pull it through, make another loop which is very similar, if you guys know how to crochet, it's very similar to crochet, so it should look something like that on one side and something like this on the other side. Again, you, you put your hand inside the loop, grab it, and pull it through. So it would look something like that. Reach, pull through, make a loop, and keep doing it until you're almost done. Okay, at this point, you kind of, it's a good idea to kind of make it even, all the loops, and start twisting it, making it a circle. Meaning that the outside loops like those are gonna be bigger than those little inside loops. And this circle is smaller. For this one, we just, I just, I had more fabric, so it looks bigger, but it's the same principle. And then when you, reach the end, one of them go inside the other, and you take your thread and needle, 
and just sew it together right here and then so it's gonna look something like that you can make a bunch of those in different colors make it like a fun playground pillow or you can stuff one inside of the other and make it that pretty cool huh and this fabric is actually very easy to stuff because the inside of it is very slippery that makes it easier to twist and to put the filler in so you do the same way it's three yard by five inches wide you sew it just plain straight stitch and then you start turning it just like the same thing we were doing before then you stuff it until you get something like this and like I said before don't stop the ends because while you're turning it you're gonna lose this stuffing any every anyways and it's gonna be everywhere so just do it afterwards so make sure it's full but not completely super super hard okay, so now let's start with the fun part okay so this one goes over then under then over again and keep pulling it as you go because you would want it to be tighter and tighter this one goes under so it's basically alternating under over under over until these two ends meet so we need to stop and if you see that you have extra fabric feel free to just cut it you don't have to make it bigger than you want it to be so stuff one inside of the other and when you pick a fabric it's a good idea to pick something that has multiple colors like this one because when you sew it you won't even see a seam and you take your needle or thread and start sewing it and my thread is invisible which this seam would be very hard to see So you just sew all the way around and end up with this. So you sew and you sew all the way around and you end up with this little pillow. You can make them in different colors, different sizes to match up your decor. And the good thing about pillows is they are a good way to tie in the colors in the room. Like if you have one piece of furniture that is brown and one that is black, they might not really go well together. But when you have pillows of black and brown and a few other colors they pull the whole room together so pillows are a good way to make your design look cohesive so i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you have any questions or comments feel free to reach out all directions are also on the website if you need to look at to take a look and until next time i'm katya d with design your life